Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Alina Islam, and I'm a mining analyst here at Red Cloud Securities. So I'm very pleased to introduce Broad Ahead Lithium to you today, a lithium company with exposure to all three types of deposits in the United States. For the webinar today, we have with us Ian Stalker, Executive Chairman. Ian will provide an introduction to the company, including an overview of activities that are currently underway at its pegmatite and clay projects in Arizona. After the presentation, we'll take your questions live. Please send us your questions by the chat box and we'll get through as many as we can. Before we get started, I do need to mention the fine print. For Broad Ahead Lithium, there may be some forward-looking statements made on this webinar. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the Broad Ahead Corporate Presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud Securities, I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. We note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investment. Please see our most recent research located on our website for broad ahead specific disclosures. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Ian. Please take it away. Alina, thank you very much. And uh, to everyone on the call, Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you may be in the world. And thanks for your time uh, and giving me the opportunity to, again, bring to your attention where we are with the Brad Ahead company, uh, that is the Lithium Exploration and Development Company. I have control of the slides, I'm glad to say, so I'll rattle through them. And I think uh, uh, Alina was quite right in to make the, the statement about forward-looking statements, and we obviously um seek safe harbor as a consequence of that but moving on to the project and the company itself we always make the commentary that one of the things we're very fortunate about in brad ahead is that we are located in the usa in nevada and arizona both states being states that are highly transparent in terms of their permitting easy to invest in and obviously easy to get money back out of which is not necessarily the case with quite a few of the juniors that are out there in the marketplace and in some of the producers, small scale producers that are out in their marketplace. We're lucky to be in America. And I sat in a panel just uh, last week while I was in London. And it was interesting that as the panel discussed the production of lithium um, from the brine assets and the Chile, uh, Argentina setup, the pegmatite spodumene assets in Africa, to some extent, limited though they are, uh, and challenging though they are, I and mean, also the spodumene, pegmatites, etc., in Australia. And they forgot that one of the biggest markets, and of course Canada, I should have mentioned, by the way, but one of the biggest markets for the demand of the batteries in these lithium battery cell operations is, of course, the USA. And what the USA wants more than anything is to have a regular supply of its own unfettered access to its own lithium supply and there's a limited number of projects out there they can go to and i'm sure all of you are aware of thacker pass now, thacker pass has a capital cost of at the moment estimated at 2.3 billion but i think i would take a very sound bet in it saying it's going to be more than that and the time to get it into operation may well be more than that there's a lot of challenges there that i'm sure the guys will work very hard to manage but it's a challenging environment but that's been built um, not necessarily to make lots and lots of money, although I'm sure it will do well, but it's there to supply America lithium from its own source. So as being in America with the assets we've got, which has been pointed out by Alina, cover the three types, the pegmatites, the sedimentary clay and brine assets, it means if we can get a production story up and running, then I think we'll be looked very favourably by the US government, institutions, car manufacturers, etc., and they will encourage us to bring operations to a close term setup as far as practically possible. We are 100% owners in all the projects. And one of the other convenient things is we are very close, of course, to the end users in the state or a couple of states away, which makes the carbon footprint for traveling and moving of this material pretty low. And it's a great story to sing in the ESG environment. We are pretty well funded, we think, through to the middle of 2024. 
Right now, uh, this is this. I can tell you, we sit with just three million, just over three million in treasury, treasury, and we have a clear vision to an additional three million dollars, which comes when we achieve two point five million tons of lithium carbonate equivalent in the basin. So, for a little junior company, we're not out asking for money. We're not out selling our soul to try and get investment in here. We're just bringing the market up to date and saying these are why we're investable. And here's why you should have a look at it. We certainly, at this moment in time, don't intend to dilute the shareholding by bringing in any more cash. And that's an unusual setup. We have, of course, as I mentioned, being in Nevada and Arizona, you know they are highly ranked in terms of the Fraser Institute. And so there's no risk there in reality. We have a very strong board and management. Um, and the board management, we say 20% of share shares here are held by the board management. It's probably, when you put it all together with the options that are uh, pretty well in the money, even today, then we've probably got about 27%. Um, of course, being in the States, there's no need to talk about infrastructure. It's a given. Geological risk, well, yeah, it's always there in anything we do, but lithium and clay is, isn't the hardest geological challenge in the world. And the pegmatites I'm going to talk about, and we'll give you some uh, realistic information on that. And we recognize the ESG. We've always been a participant, even at this early stage of our development, in the ESG-driven growth. So we believe it's the right time, the right place, and we have the right people to develop this these set of projects going forward. That's the team. Um, no need to labor it too much. Some of us are old hands, some of us are relatively new hands, but the team is solid. I think it's important to recognize that we brought in excellent consultants um, in the form of Dr. Yatendra Sharma, who's just one of the top metallurgical processing guys in the field and who understands lithium and clays. Don Haynes, who's been around in the lithium space for quite a while and has become very popular, of course, since 2017. And then Adam Hawkins was deliberately brought on for his ability to get us into Washington with the ESG approach that we've got and to, we've got, and to look at the opportunity of funding from Washington and the sources that exist there. So we've been very conscious to make sure we, we're seen as an American-based company and not as an offshore company. And I think that's quite important as we go forward. And that's why Joey is, is there as our main COO. He lives and, and uh, works, obviously, from Tucson into our project sites. So primary lithium growth with flagships in pegmatite and clay assets. We say that because that's where we started work. And the first one we kicked off was, in fact, the clay project at the basin area. And you'll see later on some slides associated with it. And we put out a new resource um, oh, about two or three months ago where we identified the 1 million tons of lithium carbonate equivalent. Um, it only covers 14% of the total project area we have under our license. And so there's a huge growth opportunity, um, potentially up to four plus million tons of lithium carbonate equivalent. And we're very confident based on the drilling that we've done re recently that we can step out towards the north of our current license area in what's called Basin North and pick up the additional one and a half million tons to take us to that two and a half million ton threshold where we get the three million dollars of US dollars in the treasury as a consequence of the agreement with the lithium royalty company, LRC. We also recognize that, you know, clay projects take a bit of time to develop. They're not fast. And I personally, as an individual, don't mind being second taxi off the rank when it comes to developing them, because I know history will tell us that, um, a lot of these new style projects take a little while to bed in. And so I'm happy to see other guys working to achieve that. So we, we concentrated at the second phase of our work on the San Domingo project area, because there, historically, there was mining for pegmatites, spodumene bearing pegmatites. There is a history of samples that have been taken over the years. There's disturbed ground. And we started drilling there at the beginning of this year. And you can see there the couple of intersections we got, 32 meters at 1.6. So it wasn't shabby. And then a further nine and a half at 1.85, including three meters at 3.03. So we, we got some very interesting indicators. And then from these samples, what also pitched up that was very interesting is that the very preliminary test work we did from a processing point of view highlighted that we could produce a sellable lithium concentrate grading just over 6% Li2O, 6.1%. Based on, and remember this is America we're working, so they're still in inches and feet, et cetera, over there, based on a quarter inch sizing, so a gravity product that gave us an over 50% recovery to that lithium concentrate. And you can imagine producing a gravity concentrate isn't the most expensive methodology in the world. 
So we're encouraged that if we can get more of the same type of lithium in our drilling, then there's a fine chance we can put out a resource in the not too distant future and highlight just the opportunity that becomes from taking out a gravity concentrate and being what I mentioned right at the beginning, near to production in the eyes of the American government. And when I say near to production, I'm guessing that I'm, I'm targeting a sort of late 2025 potential gravity sourced production coming from these spodumene pegmatites. So let's just talk about the, uh, the San Domingo for a little while. We have now got 33 square kilometers of ground. We deliberately pegged it out following quite a lot of work we did, both in the preliminary drilling and then on the ground with boots in the, in the ground itself, and identifying a significant a growth in the amount of pegmatites that were identified on surface in this greenstone hosted rock material. We did 7,000 meters to begin with. We talked about the intersection we got, and these huge LCT sensors were also evident, giving us that confidence we're in the right zone. And we picked up this extra ground, this 33.6 kilometers of ground, because the last thing we wanted was noisy neighbors on our doorstep. So we made sure that the most prospective ground that we could tell was picked up and covered by our licenses that we have. We started a second drilling campaign um, around about September of this year. Um, we're now almost 80 percent complete. But with the assays taking as long as they do these days to come around, we've been limited in terms of the assays we put out there. We've had some encouraging results that we have put out. Some of the new targets, for example, the bulk target uh, highlighted that we have got a fairly good intersection off it, as you can see there, um, but a relatively low grade, but within it, some decent grade as well. And that's approximate to the midnight oil, which is where those earlier excellent assays come in from. Um, I've talked about the metallurgical test work, and I'll, I'll just summarize that towards the end of the, the story in this one. But we picked up this ground because we can see just the opportunity and perhaps the next phase, phase for us is to have a relatively lower cost RC drilling campaign because we've only targeted the, the shallow nature of these ore bodies at the moment and from the RC drilling campaign make better use of the money we've got and highlight the targets in more detail before we get into the costly diamond drilling or more costly diamond drilling is probably the best way to describe it. Um, we did soil analysis, and as you can see there, we picked up a lot of indicators. They were ground truthed by SRK, whom we employed. We thought we'd get one of the uh, better groups in the world to give us a hand as a junior company. So between them and ourselves, we highlighted a huge train, trend, 10.5 kilometers of a signature pegmatite trend, pegmatite trend in the area. So we were very excited and remain very excited about this opportunity. Midnight Oil, for example, where we had that really interesting intersection, we've also found further extensions at depth, and we're now beginning to be able to put together a bit of a rough model, which we'll be talking to SRK about, and that's why I mentioned at the earlier part of my presentation, I'm hoping that we can put out a pretty early uh, 43101 compliant resource in the early part of 2024. So that gets us excited, as well as some of the other areas we're busy drilling in as well. And so, for example, Bolt was the one near us. And you can see, again, we've identified a kind of shape that exists there, um, which is when I say it's next door to Midnight Oil, it literally is. It's just a walk away. So they're all close to each other. Um, and then we talked about the metallurgical test work results. I, I just want to emphasize again, we took three samples from one of the core drills holes we had taken. And we identified a low grade, a medium grade and a high grade sample. And we started work only on the medium grade, that's the 1% Li2O, because we felt it was in that order of magnitude we would like to think our resource will come in at. Um, and as I mentioned to you, what we got was a 50 plus percent recovery to a 10% mass pool, 50 plus percent recovery of the lithium present to a 10% mass pool, generating a 6.1% concentrate, which was low in iron and low in beryl. So it actually did suit the typical purchase of LC6 concentrate. And as we know, we're building refineries, et cetera, within America and Texas and Piedmont are also busy further north. So for us, it was a great opportunity and we rejected 60% of the mass that only contained 2.1% of lithium. So not only did we get the, the mass pool that we wanted and the concentrate grade we wanted from the gravity uh, performance, we also created a middlings, which had a much higher grade and gave us the opportunity of taking that through to flotation. And as we get through this phase of drilling, you can imagine why we're very keen to get the resource out and get moving on the next phase of, 
of uh, metallurgical development work because there really is a great opportunity here of a fast start. We, um, Morningstar was a target that we've been looking at. We have had a significant amount of drilling down there this time. It was one of the better and most obvious pegmatites in, in the area. Um, we're all waiting uh, with our bated breath for the assays to come back, but we've certainly seen indications of fairly lengthy uh, intersections of pegmatite. And visually, you know, spodumene has been observed, but in many instances, spodumene can be altered, spodumene can move and displace itself. So we'll wait for the assays before we get too excited. But it's a very, very interesting pegmatite that will, I think, also add to the resource numbers that we're getting from midnight oil. At least that's what we hope. And then, so summarizing the, the pegmatites just for a second, remember what I'm saying, we're looking to get a resource out by the early part of 2024. We've done some preliminary test work. So we actually head to Washington in February of next year as well. And as we head over there, we have been told that if we can identify a near-term near production opportunity, then the American government, via our lobbyists, etc., will do their best to encourage us in some shape or form. And I'll leave it to you to imagine how they could help us. But I can see us obviously saying that by 2025, we believe, providing the results come out as we hope, we believe we could have a near-term operation. Now, secondly, we've got the lithium and clays that we talked about right at the beginning. Uh, you can see the circled area that's a basin and clay project. That's where we've concentrated. On the left-hand side of that cartoon, you can see the other land packages we've got. So a lot more to be drilled, but we're concentrating there on the basin north, which is a little square box to the north of the original drilling at basin east, etc. We haven't got into basin, basin west yet, so there's plenty of extra um, growth to come, but we're going to be drilling there. Uh, I think January permits, are, uh, we hope, will be in place by that time. We've certainly got um, indication that we can move into the Basin North environment, and that means we can get kicked in, start drilling by January 2024, and I hope deliver a program that gives us the 2.5 million tons of lithium carbonate equivalent, because as I mentioned, that gives us the $3 million extra in our treasury by the end, I hope, of Mark, sorry, April, May time, which is sweet. Um, one of the things we've learned about this ore body uh, is the fact it's pretty consistent. You can see where the drilling has been in Basin East. Um, in the cartoon, it's got the sort of pinkish colours. Um, we're in Basin North, uh, which is just about the same size footprint. We now have got our QP telling us we can step out um, the radius between the holes of up to even a kilometre. That's how consistent this ore body is. So we can deliver for the, the extension um, a fairly robust inferred resource, which is sufficient for the, the needs of the LRC company um, by doing a limited amount of drilling. So it really is a, a value accretion forest type situation. And what we're finding in the ore body is that there is a high grade band. It's about 16 meters thick and it runs at a roughly 13, 400 PPM LI. And interestingly enough, associated with it is a molybdenum um, material, which was a bit of a surprise to us when we found it. But I should note that next door to Basin is the old and still operational Baghdad copper mine. And one of their more successful byproducts from the Baghdad copper mine is their um, molybdenum byproduct. So maybe it wasn't too much of a surprise when we think about it that we found it there in our Basin um, mineralized zone area. But if it's right and we're now looking at it to say how do we recover that molybdenum, then it actually gives this particular ore body an added value in the value content of the molybdenum present. It's quite substantial. I can't say it's, it's small. It's quite substantial. We've done our own internal calculations, which will remain internal for the moment. But it's uh, enough for us to start looking at it from a metallurgical extraction point of view. And if we get some success, then it obviously adds two the kind of ore body treatment that we can see going forward on that high grade zone because it's, it's easy to selectively mine that high grade zone as the upfront operational starting point. So what else have we got? Um, the drilling I've mentioned, you can see what we're talking about in Q1, the 1.5 million tonne lithium carbonate equivalent. I don't think there's any 
um, need to sort of explain much further. The thickness of that general upper clay ore body is about 80 meters. It's consistent. We've seen it more and more as we head north. And you, if you can see my my arrow just pointing upwards, we can see constantly 80 to 90 meters thickness in the holes that I'm identifying at the moment. So we have every reason to believe we're going to find more of the same up here and more of the same grade. So we remain pretty optimistic about getting that 2.5 million ton total uh, lithium carbonate equivalent and the $3 million coming in as a consequence. And then we have Wiki up. I'm not going to waste your time or mine to talk about that other than there's a lot more lithium carbonate equipment to come when we start developing this project. And I think this could be as big as some of our neighbours in the north in Nevada. We are, as um, Alina mentioned at the beginning, and I, I'm going to take a little bit of a diversion here. We do have lithium brain assets in Nevada. They are drill ready in our mind. Um, they're both located in the state of Nevada. We believe they are the kind of brains that are associated with um, Silver Peaks, the Albemarle operation, about 40 to 50 k's away from us. Some are shallower than others. Some are deeper, as you can imagine. Some um, have got a perch water table at a nice level. But the, ge the geology and the uh, radiometrics that we've done and the gravity surveys indicate that there is tables there that we should be drilling into. We've not done it only because we've got enough in our hands with the resources I have at my disposal, both in terms of people and in terms of cash. But that remains an opportunity for other people and we will start looking in a little bit more intensely now, other people coming in and saying, well, hey, guys, we'd like to help you develop that. Um, and we'll cross that bridge when we get it. But the one I want to spend a bit of time in, and it's fairly recent with us, is the fact that we have um, assets in places like Pennsylvania and the Smackover District in Texas. These are the old lithium oil brine assets that we collected. And you can see there are 720 acres of least consolidated or five targets. This area in Pennsylvania in particular has had lithium grades being sampled, as you can see there, at 490, 489, basically the same number, adjacent or very proximal to our lease properties. There is naturally the infrastructure that existed from the old oil and gas operations there. And our COO, Joey Wilkins, is heading there on Monday next week to go and put his feet in the ground and start looking at it because what's got us all excited in the lithium space, if we can get it excited in the lithium space, of course, is the fact that Exxon has been very bullish about their targeting um, lithium production from these oil brines in Smackover and equivalent areas such as the Pennsylvania one. So we've got that, that we've done nothing with, again, for the same reason as the previous brines. All we've done is just keep them up to date in terms of licensing permits, etc. But now's the time to dust them off because if we can get attracted to some of the other companies that want to be in the oil brands and who know more about it, then I think we have some very good assets to start discussing uh, and getting moving. And there, there's an indication of the smack over, which is the Texas one. We, we don't have as big an area. We've only got 40 acres under lease, but you can see the, the well on the lease measured 561 uh, parts per million of uh, LI. So it's good looking ground, good looking great. And if we've got the major such as Exxon saying it can work, then I think it's incumbent upon us to start doing something about it. And we've got the time, we've got the people, and we've got the money to move on it, which is a sweet situation. ESG, I think I mentioned right at the beginning, we are of course committed to it. You can see the three main headlines here, environment, social, and governance. I'll not wax lyrical about it. Of course, we're just a development company. We're just an exploration company. But we do have a culture of respect and accountability. We do recognize we're working in areas where Native Americans have existed long before us, um, an area which is dry in terms of the water environment, an area that's beautiful and does need to be looked after. And we are very careful in making sure we dot the I's and cross the T. Even though we are, if you like, visitors to this country, we do have a very strong USA-based scenario and we use our own people to make sure that we uh, develop these ESG fundamentals in the right way. And you can see there our water cons conservation initiatives. And we also include the fact that we have a community website uh, that Prada runs just for the, pop the local population. So they don't feel that it's a remote country a company in the Isle of Man in the UK, that it is part and parcel of the social fabric of that part of the USA. We have 
and actually a program of work that we want to undertake and you can see it there displayed in front of you um you can see the wiki up in south, south wiki up is really just a case of keeping it dusted off and doing a little bit of work but also hold on Oh, that's my granddaughter wanting some attention. My apologies, everyone. Um, we've also got a plan of operation for permitting the clays. We expect to be drilling there in the step out program in quarter one, and we think we could have the resource out by quarter two. And then the San Domingo project uh, remains there, and you can see what we're doing in terms of Wilson, Eureka, and Pennsylvania and Texas. So we're lucky enough to be funded, everyone. We're lucky enough to have some excellent projects to work on. We have got a low carbon footprint by sourcing lithium in the USA for the USA battery market. Um, we are supported by the mining jurisdiction that exists in the USA at the moment. Um, we've really got our foot in the pedal. I think we've got the right management. I think we've got the right approach. And I really think it's worth your while looking at this because when the, the time ton comes to move on, I think we're going to be nicely placed for one near term production, the pegmatites, the spodumene and San Domingo. Two, the ongoing development of the lithium and clay asset in the basin area of Arizona. And three, both the oil brines and the normal brines that I think could bring extra value that's not seen at the moment in Brad Ahead and could reflect nicely on the share price that we are all suffering with. So having said that, uh, everyone who's present, thank you very much, Alina. That's my presentation done and dusted with. Hopefully, um, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Okay, thanks a lot, Ian. Um, so you're right, we can go into Q&A and just for our audience, you can type your questions into the chat box at any time. So a couple of questions here already, Ian. So first up, um, there seems to be some continued selling at this level, albeit in uh, relatively small volumes. Are you aware of any particular shareholder that is having to sell at these levels? I don't think anyone has to sell, but they're choosing to sell. Um, I don't. I'm not aware of anyone who's in def desperate straits, but there's definitely sellers out there. I mean, we are holding around this sort of 2P level, 2 British pence level, which is about 40% of our listing price, which is why it makes it a very attractive investment scenario. Um, and, you know, over the next few weeks, I have no doubt we'll churn through those, those shares and we will get to a much more stable situation. We certainly have a lot of support. And bear in mind that, you know, a lot of the supporters are not only the directors, but a lot of friends and family associated with the directors who are knowledgeable about lithium and the lithium market space. So I, I'm not uncomfortable with the buying and selling volumes. You know, you can see when we, <coughs> excuse me, when we put out a press release, we could be up at so 10 million shares, 15 million shares in a daily volume. And then we drift back down to the sort of 500, 400,000 numbers on a daily basis. But there is a, there's a reasonable market for these shares, both buying and selling, which is good. Okay, all right. Um, let's talk about Basin first. So you talked a lot about Basin North. Uh, just want to confirm, do you have permits to drill that yet? Yes, we have existing permits. That we're modifying slightly in terms of the um, size of the drilling campaign we're doing because we've obviously identified some new roles. We've been in regular discussions with BLM uh, in the Arizona environment, and they've been very complimentary. Uh, they've been to site. They like what they've seen in terms of our work and the way we rehabilitate and the way we go forward. So we are optimistically believing that we can get this drilling program started, permitting included, by the relatively early part of January 2024. Okay, so, um, you know, once you have permits get drilling underway, when do you think you'd have that next resource um, available to hit that $3 million payment from LRC? Would it be next year? Well, it has to be next year, yes. Um, mind you, we've not got many days to go until next year now. We're at the sort of 4th, 5th of December, so we'll be there very quickly. But yes, look, I think, I know because of the spacing we're talking about, the continuity of the ore body that we've seen, Alina, um, that I'm expecting plus or minus the same sort of thickness, plus or minus the same sort of grades. So there's no reason to expect otherwise. I suppose we could be disappointed, but we could also be uh, further excited, depending on what we see. But I think we can have that drilling campaign finished by the end of March and the resource itself calculated and available by the end of April, beginning of May. And so that okay. $3 million, as you say, then comes into the treasury. Right. Um, okay. Um, on San Domingo, I know you mentioned the assays are delayed. So when do you think you'll start seeing those? 
Look, we're seeing them drifting in, but there's actually now, I've just been told funnily enough earlier today, that there is some QAQC drama in the lab itself. Um, so, you know, who knows? We're in the hands of, of the gods to some extent when it comes to the assays. And because we're not um, the biggest company in the world, we don't have as much pull as some of our competitors, but we're constantly on the case. The six weeks turnaround time, call it eight weeks, would take us from now to the end of January. I would think all will be in place for the very, very period of 2024. Okay. Um, another question here, Ian. At what point would you start off-take agreement discussions? Look, I think we go to the Washington on February, as I mentioned in, in my earlier commentary. Um, once we have the resource out and we start talking both to Washington and more to the public, that the resource allows us to move into a sensible, small starter kit operational zone in 2025. I can tell you that, you know, naturally, no, and no surprise that Piedmont's coming for a visit because they all come for visits. It's not as though it's anything special, but because they all want to be on top of the case. So I would think that our um, potential for takeoff agreements would kick in probably towards the end of the first quarter of next year. All things, if the results come in, as, as we hope. Okay. Um, and I should, add, you know, I should add, it's interesting that the LRC royalty is only, and I repeat, only associated with the lithium and clays. The pegmatites and the brain projects are completely unencumbered. Right. Okay, um, you mentioned the, the MET testing, Ian. Any additional work planned or that was it from, from what you put out a few weeks ago? That was our preliminary effort. Um, and it was one of these, just let's throw a stone in the water and see what we get. And what we got was hugely encouraging. Um, and so now when we get the next resource number out, which I think is a, a vital statement for us, then we can start planning the a bigger range of samples just to make sure that we do cover high, medium, and low. We do cover the lithium types, if there's variable types in these um, spodumene and pegmatite areas. Um, so we will have a much more definitive study kicking off next year, all things being equal. Okay, all right. Um, I think that's it on questions, Ian. So thank you very much for hosting this webinar with us today. Uh, just as a reminder for our audience, our next webinar will feature Enfield Energy, and that's tomorrow, December 6th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Thanks for tuning in with us, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks very much, everyone.